All right, now let's move on to 1984. This is part two of the lecture. So, um, Orwell wrote this because he politically and philosophically opposed the oppression of the poor. Now, he was raised well off, um, but he still saw that saw how the poor were treated as, as wrong. Um, and this was actually quite interesting because there's a lot of, there was, or maybe still is, a lot of classism in England. Um, you have the rich and you have the poor and there's that division and that is it. So for him to actually feel something, feel sympathy, uh, and want to do some activism for uh, the poor class um, is is kind of commendable on his part. Um, he hated uh, totalitarianism in all of its forms. That's a word I still have trouble with. And he felt that the acquisition of power only made people want more power. So don't give any one person power because it's just going to make them greedy for more. And 1984 is a warning, okay, a warning about what happens when governments are given too much power by the citizens, or in some cases, um, they just take power. And this up here is actually a quote from 1984. It says, war is peace, freedom is slavery, and ignorance is strength. Characters, you have Winston, Julie, and O'Brien. These are the three main characters. Winston is the protagonist. He is the classic dystopian protagonist. Um, he's the one who sees that there is something wrong with the society in which he lives in, and he begins to rebel. Julia is his love interest, um, and she re rebels as well, but she does it for a different reason, which Winston has difficulty understanding and accepting. O'Brien is basically, uh, I want to say Winston's hero. I mean, that's basically how he starts out in the beginning as a mentor to Winston. And Winston, you know, puts him on a pedestal and, and thinks to himself, oh, well, uh, O'Brien must be a rebel too. Uh, but he finds out other things. All right, and then you have Big Brother, who is the uh, all-seeing ruler of Oceana, which is where uh, some of this takes place. And then you have the other characters. They are um, they're kind of minor characters, but they are important to the plot, and I will just let you uh, freeze, pause this so you can uh, read these. All right, and the genre, and of course this is a dystopian novel. It is the dystopian novel. Um, but... I wanted to make the distinction that it's not science fiction. Okay, science fiction includes spaceships, uh, Star Wars, Star Trek, that's science fiction, and I'm sure y'all could think of other ones, but all the technical devices that's used in the party existed when the book was being written and published. All right, the form and the structure. So the book is divided into three parts and an appendix. Uh, part one, we just get background information of the characters. Um, we see the society as it is. And then we also see um, we see the beginning of Winston rebelling. Uh, part two just basically advances Orwell's political message. Part three uh, details Winston's brainwashing and re-education after his uh, rebellion. And the appendix describes newspeak. Now, newspeak is actually a term uh, invented by Orwell, as is doublespeak, um, double think the thought police and actually from this book several uh several words uh were placed in the dictionary um and if somebody shares any, another author shares or movie or any any type of art shares any characteristic with orwell um it is then called orwellian which not many authors um get their own noun now, for our uh, purposes, we are reading part one and part three. I'm just going to summarize part two for y'all because it is it is really dense, and it just basically goes over the restrictions that the government makes them makes them have. It's part two is a bit boring, so I will save y'all from that. Uh, the topics and theme statement. So conflict, of course, because it's dystopian. Uh, individual versus uh, society. Individual versus the community. Uh, conflict between freedom and totalitarianism, um, and then the feelings of alienation, hopelessness, and loneliness, which are very prominent in 1984 because, again, they are not allowed to have friendships. Um, they're only, they only should be dedicated to the party. Um, and then the dangers of totalitarianism, when you give someone too much power, they want more and they're never going to be satisfied. Uh, 
philosophical manipulation and physical torture as a means or as means of control. Um, language as a form of mind control. Again, uh, certain words are used a certain way. And technology has the power to do great evil. Um, and it's really funny to think of what Orwell would say about our modern society with our use of technology and dependence on it. And then control of information and history. Okay, there's symbols. A symbol is an object, character, feature, and colors used to represent an abstract idea or concept. And these are the symbols that we will be going over in um, as we go on and read. And all right, so the there are three parts, and these this is the chapter layout. Um, part one has eight chapters. Um, part two, which we are going to skip and I will summarize for you, has ten chapters. You're welcome. And then part three uh, has six chapters. So um, as I said, part two is very dense. It goes over definitions and everything else. It, it can be summarized. If you wish to read it, I'm not going to stop you or say no, but as a class we will not be reading it. So that concludes um, this wonderful and insightful um, lecture on 1984, George Orwell, World War II, and Dystopia. Um, you will now have a project to do. Have a wonderful day.